All right, welcome back to episode two, which is the second week of my specific marathon block leading into Berlin Marathon, which is from six weeks to go until seven weeks to go, which, in, which included a really decent speed session for me, well, more or less threshold session on the roads in Moiben. It included a half marathon in Eldoret, which was part of my long run, so I'll go through all these in detail shortly, and a pretty significant power outage that we're currently dealing with in our home, which is why we're shooting in a different location today from Kerio View, which is actually one of the more popular uh, places for people to stay here in Iten with an incredible view, as you can see over the Rift Valley uh, behind us here. Um, yeah, I mean, it drops really quickly, several hundred meters. There's actually a couple of tracks just down there that people can train at as well. Uh, but yeah, at our place right now, we've had, uh, we've had no power for a couple of days, which is part of the Kenyan experience for sure. Um, almost every trip I've had out here has had a couple of short power cuts. Sometimes they're, you know, half an hour, sometimes they're a day or two. I think these things you just got to embrace out here. You just got to understand it's just part of it. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's been a good week in training for sure. And I will go through the week as usual from Monday through to Sunday. Uh, before we show you bits and pieces of the half marathon that happened on Sunday, which, as I mentioned, was uh, incorporated into my long run, which I thought went really, really well. So uh, so last week we finished with the 35K long run with Eric from Hong Kong uh, along Moi Ben Road, which I uh, probably pushed uh, a fraction too hard. Uh, and I say that because, you know, I think if, when you're at altitude, you definitely need to be careful in your first couple of weeks to not push too hard. For reasons I probably can't really speak to because I don't know the science to it more specifically, but you can very easily overtrain up here. Um, you know, your heart rate obviously is, is higher on every single run. Um, it's a little bit difficult, a little bit more difficult to recover from every single run. Um, but in that run, I was absolutely exhausted the following day and I took the full day off. And I remember thinking to myself on Monday afternoon, uh, which was August the 7th, uh, that I might even take the next day off. But when I woke up the next day, I, I, I felt decent enough to, to get out and do a 20.5K run. Uh, which, so once again, logging everything on Strava and we'll put the Strava log up here on the screen. Uh, I got lost on this run, um, and found a new route, which I actually really enjoyed. Uh, used my phone just to navigate through the trails, which, uh, is definitely possible out here. So Google Maps works just fine. You can make your way through the trails, um, uh, by using, by using your phone and, and also the Safaricom, uh, data here works very well, even throughout the entire town. Um, and I was seven, eight kilometers away from your town and still had pretty good service. So that was one thing that actually surprised me from the very first time that I came to Kenya was that the, the SIM cards that they have here, uh, the data, they, they actually work really well, even when you're in really remote areas. But anyway, back to the training. Um, Tuesday's uh, morning was 20.5K at 4.32 pace. Uh, that was a little bit faster than I guess I'd normally run <clears throat> out here. Uh, but it was also a pretty flat run. It wasn't, it wasn't too many hills. In the afternoon, I joined Angus, Kieran, Campbell and Reem for a very technical run in the forest here. Uh, we're definitely going to try and get you some footage of this. It's a place that a lot of Kenyans come to do uh, some jogging that is just really, really hilly. It's very technical. It's almost um, what you would call trail running. Um, you know, it's, it's not flat at all. Uh, they do a lot of uh, jogging through there at you know, it would be the equivalent of doing, if you're doing 4.30 per K pace on the flat, you'd be running probably 6 to 6.30 per kilometer pace in there, the same effort. That's how hilly and technical it is. So we, we did that in the afternoon for eight kilometers and it took 50 minutes, which as you can do the math there. And if you're looking on the Strava screen, that's a very slow average pace. The following day, I kind of surprised myself with a really good threshold session. I thought after the Sunday's run, the 35K run where my last 5K was just really hard, um, I thought I'd have a hard time backing up three days later to do a good workout, but uh, this training session was, uh, was really good for me. So I joined Eric once again. I think I'll join Eric for quite a lot of the training moving forward because we're at really similar levels. And I'm not going to speak for him, but his national record is 2.19.16. And while his current best is 2.25, uh, I think if he has a good day, he can potentially go very close to that record, uh, Hong Kong national record. So doing a lot of training with him. We did four by 10 minutes uh, at Threshold along Moi Ben Road, which is, as you've already seen on the previous video, little hilly, I wouldn't call it flat, wouldn't call it hilly, it's sort of in between, just got a few rolling hills. Uh, we had two minutes recovery between each, and I was sort of sitting right between 326 and 323 per kilometer for every uh, 10 minute uh, block with two minutes jog recovery. Um, felt very in control, um, you know, I do my best in these series to try and do a translation as to what that would mean for, um, for pacing at sea level. 
there is no way of knowing for sure what that is. But um, at this point in time, I would have been at altitude for 10 days. And the hills included probably mean it's about 12 to 13 seconds per kilometer slower than doing it in good weather on the flat at sea level, I would have a random guess. So that's probably very similar to doing um, these intervals at 3.11 to 3.14. Um, felt like I could have done a couple more, which I think is the perfect uh, a place to be at the end of a threshold session. Threshold sessions shouldn't be all out. You should save them for, for VO2 max sessions and some long runs, I think, when we get close to the uh, marathon. Um, but yeah, I think it's always good to be able to say at the end of a threshold session, look, I could do uh, one or two more reps or, or 10 or 15 minutes more at that sort of effort. Um, and that's exactly what it felt like here. I took precision fuel and hydration between every single rep. Uh, luckily I had Albert, the driver there that was driving alongside us and giving us drinks and gels. And yeah, once again, um, just super helpful to be able to top up on the, on the glucose through the, through the, uh, through the workout, which probably isn't necessary, but because we're getting somewhat close now to the race, um, I'm trying to practice in most sessions fueling almost to the similar grams per hour in carbs as what I'll take in the race, which is around about that 80 to 100 grams per hour. So I probably had pretty pretty similar amount in this workout throughout um, the session as well. Um, the next day, I once again felt really tired. As you can see in my training log here, I mentioned that the following day on Thursday, I was very tired and I decided that I just jog easy through till Sunday, which is probably what I'll do every week. I'll probably do a Wednesday or Thursday harder session, whether it be threshold, VO2 max, or a combination of both, and then a, a weekend long run. Um, but I can easily tell a trend here that I, I hit a really good session that I you know, get to sort of 90% or 95%. The following day, I'm absolutely exhausted. And this is very common at altitude to feel like this. I'm normally not this tired 24 hours after a session. And I think the altitude really can really do that too. Um, it might be a combination too of just it being hilly. Uh, I'm not normally doing so much on the hills. Uh, but yeah, so 14.4K in the morning on Thursday at 4.41 per K, that was tough. Uh, the following day, I joined Campbell, an American who joined one of our most recent Sweat Elite Kenya training camps for another 14.7K run that was really hilly. Um, yeah, I almost regretted joining him towards the end of the run because it was just so hilly that it was really difficult to make it um, easy, which is what I wanted that day. Uh, but of course, it was great to run with Campbell, but the course itself was, um, was there was just so much climbing, especially towards the end of it, that I actually ended up taking a, uh, a lift back home up up the hill for the last couple of kilometers because my heart rate was just so high and it was supposed to be recovery day. So another 14K in the morning on Friday in an hour 10. Once again, all these stats in the Strava. Um, in the afternoon, I did a very light jog with a couple of friends who convinced me last minute to get out the door and do a jog. Uh, 6.2K, just under four miles at 5.04 pace on the flattest uh, possible route you can run in, uh, in Iten, which is just straight down the road and straight back up the road. And then on the Saturday, the day before the half marathon long run, I woke up feeling pretty good, 18.1K, um, 424 pace. I had a couple of stops in this run um, just because I, I, yeah, I genuinely just felt pretty tired towards the end of it. And um, up some of the hills, just when I noticed that my heart rate's getting really high, I, I am noticing that, especially on this Garmin 965, the heart rate monitor is, is very accurate. Some of the more recent Garmin's um, haven't been so accurate, but this one is. When I'm noticing that it's sort of getting up above 150, 155 beats per minute in an easy run, I tend to stop and just wait for it to go down a little bit. Um, in a session, I'd never do that, but in an easy run, um, especially if I'm going up a hill, I'll just stop, wait for it to come back down to 130 and then, and then keep going. Um, that takes us to the Eldoret Half Marathon, which was on Sunday, which I used as part of my 35 kilometer long run. So this idea came to mind about a week and a day earlier when we learned that the event was on. And I thought to myself, well, on this day, six weeks out from Berlin Marathon, I'd wanna be doing something pretty marathon specific anyway. So, you know, we could either go out to Moy Ben, do three by 5K or maybe four by 5K at marathon effort, or we could jump into this race and do the race at marathon effort uh, and do a longer warm up and longer cool down. And I just thought to myself, look, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a pro athlete. I, I want to make sure that this is a good experience for myself as well. I'd never done a race in Kenya before, and it's always been of interest to me to do one. So I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to jump into this race that was 45 minutes down the road, a little bit lower elevation than Iten. It's about 2,100 meters as opposed to 2,350 meters. And uh, yeah, we actually quite a few foreigners ended up doing it as well. Some did it as a hard out race. 
Uh, I myself did it as a training run. So I did an 8.5 kilometer uh, warm up, and then I did the half marathon with really no set pace in mind. So you'll see in the video footage, like I speak to it, it's, it's, it's something that I just literally went into thinking, I'm gonna start this race feeling like if I had to, I had to run, I could run a full marathon um, in this race, but I would stop it obviously where the end is at 21.1K. I thought beforehand, knowing the course, after I found out what the course was gonna be like, it was eight laps of 2.6 kilometers. Um, every single lap had a 25 meter um, elevation gain over about 1K. And then the next 1.6K back down to the start of the loop was a very gradual downhill. Now, having, you know, spent quite a bit of time running up hills here in, in, at altitude and knowing how much they affect you, I knew that up those hills, I was gonna have to slow right down. I thought to myself, probably around 335 to 340 per kilometer was probably gonna be what I was gonna end up being, which would have been a 116 half, 117 half, um, which seems so far off marathon pace. Obviously my best is 220, 46, which means my goal would be to run, you know, what's uh, under 220, which is 318 or 319 per kilometer. That's what I was thinking was gonna be 15 to 18 seconds per kilometer off my goal pace. Things we have to factor into though are obviously elevation, hills, because the whole course itself had 200 and something meters elevation, very warm towards the end of the race. Uh, but I think I controlled this race really well. I was very lucky to have Reem at, um, at the start of every single lap to let me practice the drinks. So I was alternating between uh, one lap I was taking in uh, precision fuel and hydration drink mix and every other lap I was throwing cold water over my head to try and cool down and I took three gels throughout the race one very early on one I think it was at, at about three or four k one at about eight or nine k and one at about 16 k and finished feeling like the energy was was good no depletion whatsoever and I think that was very um, evident in the ability to be able to get straight into a six kilometer cool down at 420 per kilometer pace, which is sort of a normal aerobic run pace. You know that you've depleted yourself entirely if your cool down is a struggle or if you, your cool down pace is just really, really slow. Um, but Eric, uh, again, joined me. He, he finished just, I think, 10 seconds behind me in the race as well. Uh, we finished off a six point something kilometer cool down uh, to make a 35 kilometer long run. And uh, yeah, a really good day all in all. I'm really glad I did this. Um, I was definitely really tired the following day once again. We're filming this on Tuesday. So yesterday was the day after the race. I was absolutely exhausted. Um, took the full day off again. Uh, but yeah, really glad, awesome experience. I highly recommend people jumping into a, a race here in Kenya if you have the chance. Of course, it's a bit daunting. You know, I got absolutely smashed. I was 195th out of 220 something. I got lapped. Um, you know, you'll see all this video footage. I was lapped by many people. I was lapped by women. Uh, but you know, you just got to focus on yourself and get done what you need to get done. And I think averaging 333 per kilometer in the end, which was a 114 finishing time, um, was a little bit better than I expected uh, because I figure, you know, if I'm aiming for a 319, 318 per kilometer on the race day, I think 14 seconds uh, is you know well and truly justifiable given the elevation, the hills, the uh, the heat, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And we've still got six weeks to go. So. All in all, a 138 kilometer week, which is 86, 87 miles, I think, maybe just under. Um, definitely went to plan, so far no hiccups. I think I'm paying attention to the energy in the body really well, taking days off when I really know I need to, and uh, just making sure that I'm not um, you know, doing two workouts uh, too close to each other. Uh, that's, I think, the biggest danger here in Kenya is doing a really hard workout feeling tired the next day and then going really hard potentially two days later. That's something that I see people do here all the time and, and then have a really hard time um, you know, recovering from. So I'm making sure I'm having at least two days recovery between every hard workout. So yeah, another great week. We have just under six weeks to go now. And uh, next week's video is gonna be really cool because uh, this morning we went down to the track in Eldoret and saw quite a few uh, world-class marathoners training in action in Eldoret, but we'll save that for the next video. This video series is sponsored by Saw Running, my favorite running apparel brand based out of the UK. You'll see everything I wear in this video series to be Saw Running. They produce the best singlets and the best tights and marathon shorts in the game.
Top for Running, one of Europe's fastest growing running retail stores that stock all the top brands, all the latest models at the lowest prices. You can see them at the Berlin Marathon. They'll have a booth at the Expo. If you're looking for a new pair of races or trainers, do not look past Top for Running and use the code Sweat Elite at checkout to score the lowest possible price. You can find the link in the description of this video. Precision Fuel and Hydration, look no further for the highest quality electrolytes, carbohydrate drink mix, and gels on the market. The caffeine gel is my absolute favorite, and you can use the code SWEATELITE-YT for YouTube, 15% off your order at Precision Fuel and Hydration. Pillar Performance, a sports micronutrition company that I've been working with for quite some time that create the triple magnesium blend that has really improved my sleep. You can use the code SWEAT15 for 15% off your first order. HVMN's Ketone IQ, a relatively new supplement used by many of the world's best endurance athletes, such as Sarah Hall, Cameron Worth, and others. You can use the code SWEATELITE to score a 20% off discount at checkout over at HVMN, and you can experience the magic of ketones yourself. <laughs> So we're signing up for a race. This will be my first race in Kenya. It's the Eldoret, the Eldoret Half Marathon, which is taking place next weekend on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So I would have been here uh, for 14 days at that point, so two weeks. It's 300 shillings, which is about $1.90. And um, I'm gonna get absolutely demolished because obviously I'm gonna race a bunch of Kenyans It'll be at 2,100 meters elevation, about an hour down the road. My, yeah, I, I think the winning time for the men will be around 61. 61 or 63. And the women? Women around 73, 72 or 70. Yeah. And you said the course is quite flat? Yeah, flat, no. So that, flat, no. That could be anything. That could be anything. I have no idea what time I'll go for. I, I guess maybe 75, 74, but it depends entirely on the course and, the, and how how flat it, it really is. Is this my race number, 375? Yes, yes, this is my race number. Perfect, cool. So we've signed up for the first race. I've seen a lot of races here, mostly cross country, but I haven't actually watched a road race here. So um, I will be watching it from the very back of the pack. And... <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. According to Oscar, I look younger and smarter now. <laughs> so. Hopefully that means faster. Oh, uh, not really a fixed pace in mind because uh, the altitude, it's going to be a little bit warm. No idea of the course. So if it was, if it was at sea level on the flat, I'd be going for just off, you know, 318, 319 per kilometer. Um, but I assume this would probably be closer to 330 to 335 per kilometer because it would have been two weeks since being here now. Um, adaption is, you know, getting there. But um, yeah, pretty much not setting a pace, just trying to run it at what should feel like marathon effort with a 10K warm up and a 5K cool down to make 35K run. We'll do all the practicing of the gels, the drinks, every lap, well not every lap, but maybe every second lap, take a gel, take in some of the precision fuel and hydration, um, drink mix as well, so try to simulate marathon as much as we can. No, I like I like this brand a lot because uh, this year I, I did a they you know they have a all night test there. Yeah. For you to check your hydration levels, uh, your sodium levels, and then you can schedule a free all night video call with them. And this like and they give you advice based on you, your you did that. test result. I did that, and they did the email follow up with me. Yeah. Yes. I was uh, ordering. I was ordering their products in Egypt, and they couldn't send the products in time into Egypt for my race. So they. So I was racing rather than marathon. So they decided to ship another batch of product uh, to rather them, so that I can get it. That's amazing. Yeah, they go yes. above and beyond for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll run a couple of laps of the course to see what it's like. We've heard. One side of the course is quite a climb, like 25, 30 meters, something like that. Which would mean if we do eight laps, it's like 250 meters elevation gain in half marathon. So that's fun at altitude. So, but uh, yeah, let's get going. But who's doing a long warm up? See you soon. So I got told by the race organizer, well, one of the guys that was part of the race organization the other day, that the winner should run 
61. Now, if that's true, if that happens, that is absolutely wild because I, I would just. <laughs> I would assume this course is like three, three to four minutes slow. Who knows? At least for for a Mzungu. I reckon if you can run 61 on this course, you can probably run 50, 58, 57. For a loop, 2.7. All the uphill, all the downhill, no flat road. <laughs> you see anyone warming up except you? <laughs> That's why I'm okay. Curious. Sick. <laughs> so paraphrasing, the race is supposed to start at eight, and that's all on the posters. Okay. But it now starts at 9.30. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, what's the updated fueling plan? Are you going to have breakfast? Ooh, no, I probably won't eat anything. I'll just keep keep drinking the, the drink mix. Um, it's 8.10, we start at 9.30. I still want to do another 5k, because uh, we've only done 5.4, I think. Um, but no, I won't eat anything. So we got back out there at about 8.50, so this is about 40 minutes before the start now, and did it a couple of minutes, I think we did three more K and got ready to start. Women got started. Why am I so nervous? I don't know, a bit, 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 bit of butterflies in the, in the stomach right now. Um, and then we got started on our venture onto the 2.6 kilometer lap, eight times. And uh, yeah, straight off the bat, I, I was obviously um, well behind the, the main pack of guys. Um, Angus took some awesome footage of the front guys, which looked something like a road mile at the start. I think the first hundred meters, um, we, we put a story on, on Instagram and a whole lot of people replied saying, I was like, is that, is that a half marathon or is that a, a, a mile race? Because it just was such a fast start by the, by the front guys. But they were all, you know, jostling for position, trying to get, um, trying to get uh, you know, in, in a good place so that they could uh, make sure that they're in the front pack. And, and for these guys, like th this is a really important race for them because there's athlete managers out there scouting, there's um, you know, the result of the Elder Ed Half Marathon itself is, is, is pretty important for these guys to be able to get into other races. And uh, you know, lots of the best runners in, in, in Kenya were, were at this race. Um, and as you can see in the results of the winner running 61, I think it was 61.11 or it was 61 very low. And there was a whole lot of guys under 63 minutes. Uh, I can't express how ridiculously fast this time is. Ale Eric. Come on, tell Almost finished by steady. Almost. One, one night more? Okay. Yeah. Pick up, the, pick up the pace. Half on pace. Yep. Yeah. Well, you're just in time to jump in with these guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> jump on the pack, dude. Uh, but to run 61 minutes for the for the first guy was yeah that's I would equate that to a 57 58 minute effort if you were running on the flat on a, on a fast course. No trains. <laughs> 4.5k. <laughs> Lead bunch is not too far behind. Okay. I'm basically going like 3:45 up the hill. 325 down the hill. Such a cool experience. Let's go, let's go. Uh, I wore the um, I wore the Mizuno Rebellion Pros in this race, and I just want to point out I've posted this on on Strava already that this is an awesome shoe that really suits me personally. I find them pretty similar to the Alpha Fly in their responsiveness, but I find that they even uh, they even have a, a more advanced rocker in a sense of they they feel like they're propelling me even further forward than the Alpha Fly. Um, I'd heard really good things about these ever since they came out. There's been a lot of good reviews on them. Um, Top for Running sent me a pair to do a review. I'll do a, refu a full review next week of quite a few different shoes. Uh, but I use these also for the Wednesday workout. Uh, yeah, I, I'm a huge fan of these. I, I would definitely race in them. But I feel like I'm just propelled forward in a way that I've never really felt in a shoe before. Quite a lot of the other super shoes that I've tried, which I'll go through next week, um, you know, have a, have a nice soft landing, um, quite responsive. But they don't really feel like they're they're giving me that sort of propulsion forward, whereas this is on a new level uh, to me. So huge thanks to Top for Running for allowing me to try them out. Yeah, huge fan of Mizuno Rebellion Pro. Oh,
Ali Matt, jump on with the group. <laughs> <laughs> Keep in mind that this part of Kenya is where all, more or less, of the best Kenyan runners are based within 50 kilometers of Eldoret. Now, this race has got to be one of the most competitive half marathons in the world. Like, I know the time isn't necessarily, you know, in line with some of the other halves out there, but, you know, let's factor in the, the elevation and the, and the hills. Um, I would say this half has got to be one of the hardest halves in the world to win. Let's put it that way. In most half marathons, you know, you'll see a few people in the 58, 59 zone, 60, 61, and, and then you'll tend to see a fall off after five to 15, where the, you know, the, the elites have finished, and then, then there'll be a sort of a scattered field through. There might be a couple coming in at 62, 63, 64. But this race, there, I haven't seen the full results list. I've only seen the top 10, but there must have been at least 60 guys under 64 minutes. And if Thomas Pottinger is, is, is accurate, and I, and I really think that he probably is, that's probably equivalent to having 60 guys running 60 minutes or quicker on a flat course at sea level, I would guess. That's my best guess. Um, or, you know, 61, um, which you don't see anywhere. Like, that is wild. It is, it is ridiculous, so I have to say that uh, I might have participated in one of the most challenge, one of the deepest and hardest fields ever, maybe. But I think that half marathon is that deep every year, from what I understand. So, um, yeah, it was it was uh, it was pretty cool to be a part of something, um, a, a race with just so much sheer talent. So I think something that needs to be said about this race is that although the top top athletes in the area aren't here, the amount of depth that there is in E10 and Eldoret in general is huge, and anyone who has anything to prove is here racing, trying to do it. There's uh, team managers, team reps, uh, they're all here to scout out new people for their teams. And so, yeah, people that are here are people with something to prove. And uh, I think that makes it probably one of the most competitive races in the whole world, actually. Koski! Cheers! That was nice, it was, I mean I've said this, every time it was like smooth and flat, 326, 327, 320 I felt really good, but that, <laughs> it was just, every time it's just like, the yeah, rate goes up through the roof. And then you spend like two or three minutes just trying to recover from that, that hill, but <coughs> such a good training effort. Such an experience, such an experience. Yeah, it was so cool seeing you guys come around every time. It was awesome. I watch your vlog on YouTube. Oh, thank you. <laughs> he made it. Uh, You're in the vlog. Oh, yeah. So. 25th. Well done, guys. Thanks, Emma. Cool. Crazy to watch those fun guys just moving. Mate, when you were with them with two laps to go and they were still in the group, I was thinking, when's someone gonna move? And that leader went, didn't he? He went hard. When he went, he went properly. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that was only in the second last lap? Yeah, yeah. So what was that, two, two and a half miles to go? Yeah. Five. Ring, you're an absolute hero. <laughs> absolute hero on the course. Yeah, man, it was a tough effort out there. I was really happy with it. 72, like, on this course, I think it's good shape. We've only got 2k to go and then we've got a 35k run with a really solid uh, 21k hit out in the middle. Such a good training run. Mental grind, hills, hot, everything hopefully Berlin won't be.